What is up, Poké Peeps and Masters? It is Rusty Poké Rusty, and we are back. Back for another T Dragon Ball CCG uh, video and another deck tech. So, we went to the celebrations, the Dragon Ball celebrations right here. Uh, over the past weekend, you've seen deck profiles all week. This is if your first deck profile you've seen this week. We've had a couple more from the, my squad, the buddies that went with me to the celebrations. We kind of deck profiled the decks we took. We all did pretty freaking well. Most of us went five and one in more than, in one event or more than one event. Most of most of the side events. So we all did pretty freaking well. And I kind of wanted we just kind of wanted to put those deck profiles out there and stuff like that. So um, these deck these deck profiles have been best of one because a lot of the side events, the gunslingers, the teams, all that kind of stuff. The side events were all best of ones. Um, so you're going to see some weird choices near the end. Uh, just know that it was teched in because, again, we had no sideboards, so it was kind of just teching around with those kind of things. Those would be switched out for more con con uh, more consec consec consistent things or stuff, stuff like that. But, yeah. So the deck profile we're going over today is Lord Slug. So this is a deck that really got just a boost. It got more than the boost it needed from this new set, which it was just insane. So this deck, uh, last week at Charlotte, so this was in Chicago, so we previous to this in Ch uh, Charlotte, it went, it, it won out in um, um, rounds, which is absolutely phenomenal, again, for a deck that was so underwhelming when it first came out. Like, I loved this leader because it was like a better Vegeta, but like, the, the support with it really wasn't, plus it was a green leader, and green leaders just didn't really have support, uh, unless your name was Android. So, Slug Leader on his Awakened side, you can choose one of your life add to your hand, so self-awakening, and he gains crit for the turn. Almost carbon copy front, front. they just replace the, the image for Virginia, right? Um, when you have four less life, draw two cards, flip this card over. And Lord Slug uh, Gigantified. When you, when you attack with this card, draw one card, and once per turn you can place one card from your hand and drop area, and your opponent places one card from their hand and drop area. Pretty nice. Again, crit when you need it early on in the game to not give them the resources they want before they awaken. And and then just discarding for when it really matters comes down to like the end game. So, um, we're going to go through the deck real quick. So we're playing four of the main card, and this is really what makes the deck function. Without this card, um, like they could have gave a card with just one of these abilities, or... And they would have seen play, but they decided to make a card with both these abilities. Because the Slug deck works off of Bond. So Bond is a mostly Namekian, I think, ability that if you have uh, cards of a certain type or just Bond, it might, might not even say a certain type of card, but Bond, it means you have to have two or more or three or more, whatever the number is beside Bond, of, of certain characters on the field to be able to use their effects. They're pretty strong effects, but they require you to have a bigger field. So... What this does is this is a turn one barrier and it's a slug's army. So you get to set off most of the slug's army effects because they have bond two with just having this on field, which is super nice. And uh, as a bonus to that, you, if you, you can only have one wings in play, but it gives all the rest of your Lord slug cards um, minus one hand cost, which is super, super beautiful. Actually makes the decks function and go off at turn three, which is surprising. Um, next, you're running three copies of Lord slug Return to form, um, pretty standard. This is um, this is a turn two. If you didn't hit your wings turn one, or you're just missing, or you're trying to set up for that piece, this is a one drop at turn two, which is pretty nice. That searches out your pieces. Um, most of the, most of the time, I'm not gonna lie, this was usually charged or saved for the late game. I didn't play this on turn two much, uh, especially if my opponent went first, because I was usually just setting up, allowing me to have those two life open to uh, preemptive strike their second turn or their third turn play which is usually a pivotal turn in the game. So preemptive striking their third turn just allowed me to hit that much harder on my third turn. So this was usually safer later in the game. Once the game kind of did its little dance back and forth and back and forth, this just allowed me to reset up and go for more extended plays, which is super nice. And it only costs one with wings on field. Um, so let's get into the combo of the deck. So turn three, because of wings, you're able to drop Lord Slug uh, Young again. So bond two, Lord Sl or Slug's army. When your leader, uh, when you play this card, if your leader is Lord Slug, choose up to one L Slug's army in your drop area with energy cost of three or less, and play it. Um, then choose up to one of your energy and switch to active mode. So this actually, after you with this and this, this ends up costing you two, two mana to 
get two 20k beaters on field because your next target for it was Lord Slug, Agent of Destruction. You're running four copies of this. So four and four, um, when you play this card, your opponent automatically discards a card. Pretty beautiful and stacks with this really nicely. Um, then it has a, an effect that allows you to go even farther. So Saiyans can do it, so can Slug. Um, you go this third turn, drop this, you untap your one energy, and that allows you to go into one of your four copies of Adonic, Warrior, and Jalea. So this was your uh, target for this one. So this, you paid one energy and you get to special a Lord Slug's army with three or costs or less other than Lord Slug, Slug Agent of Destruction uh, from your hand. So you drop this. So this guy, he has Bond 2. Um, when this card attacks your opponent's leader card, or attacks your, your opponent's leader and your leader is Slug's army, they choose one card from their hand, discard. So on attack, auto, basically auto, they discard a card. Pretty snazzy, and it has critical. So, turn three, three mana. If you have wings on field, you go boom, boom, boom. Three guys, two of them 20k power, super strong, forces your opponent to combo, all that kind of stuff. And Adonic Warrior just, ex like, once you get him into, like, the loop, uh, the Adonic Warrior loop, it's just, you control exactly what they have. You discard their... You discard their hands with this, this, and the other cards I'm going to show you, and then you can like swing with your leader, get their draw, get your draw, and then give them at one of their life, and then immediately discard with Adonic Warrior. So it's just like, it's just like you, every every life you take, you can either set if it goes to their hand, you discard it. If you if you if you, if you critical, you discard it. It's, it's just crazy, and you just get a loop off. Um, it's just really hard for your opponent to control. Usually I can keep my opponent down to one or two cards every turn. It's super sick. Um, if you're able to hit this combo off on turn four, because of the wing's uh, boost, you're able to go even farther deeper than that. So if we have four mana, you tap three for this, bring it out, untap, untap one. You can go into this or this. For this play, I'd usually go straight into this and, and skip a step of this, and have you'd have two mana live. So that allows you to, so you have the discard from Adonic Warrior, you have the discard from this, and then you can EX Evolve your Lord Slug Young again into Titanic Ambition Lord Slug. This one has the highest bond at bond 3, which means you have to have 3 creatures of Slug's army on field, which you would have Adonic or this, um, itself, and then wings. So, with all that reduction, so this card when it comes into play, your opponent discards 3 cards. So. Certain turns, I was able to just go be like, bam, 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 and just, like, drop them from, like, seven cards to none. It was it was actually absolutely crazy. Plus, this card has double strike, um, which is really nice. And, yeah. So, this is definitely also a game finisher. 2,500 double strike. Um, you just kind of, you play around with Angelina and all that kind of stuff. This card, and then kind of just use this to finish off the game. Um, another card that helps you get your bond up is Zoilin, the Loyal. So this card is just, this is your free blocker, this is your Mai, this is your, uh, any other free blocker that uh, deck has, this is basically it. It's uh, Slug's Army, so it sets off all of your bonds, stuff like that, um, pretty nice. Rarely used it as, as a blocker, but it was there if I needed it, and I, like I said, I rarely used it, most of the time it became mana, but... Like I said, if I just needed that extra push a little bit farther, like say I already had this on field, I had wings, and I wanted to go into this, and I just need one more thing, I could free drop this, play this for two, boom. Pretty nice. Um, I ran three copies of Tenacious Spirit Sun Gohan. This allowed me, this is basically your, this is your boo. You play it, you draw a card, um, it allows you to play up other options if you don't start off with your turn one wings, or it allows you to dig a little bit deeper if you need a combo piece for what you're going through. It has another effect. It gets critical plus 1500 if you pay two green. I never once used that. I don't. I can't see myself really ever using it unless, unless I have the two man alive. Like I'm going for game, something like that. I just never really saw the option. So next we have the, another discard, other than what we have here in Dark Temptation Toa. So. Again, this allowed me to go extra deep. I could like because some of these I would I would just like I would just literally let these Lord Slugs and the agents just sit there in, in active mode and not attack with them. I'd only attack with the cards that could 
net net me pluses by making them discard stuff. So like I'd swing in with this, they take their one card to hand, immediately discard it. I wouldn't want to attack this and give them more cards to hand. I'd rather them just start off their hand turn with only one card in hand. This allowed me to attack in with this, then just drop this, uh, drop their card. Half the time, I wouldn't even attack with this. I'd just make them discard their last card, warp it. At the end of turn, boom. Again, it was a nice. It was also a nice thing that allowed me to go for game if I needed a little extra push. We ran two double impact Krillins. Um, pretty standard. Um, would I would I have played more of these or less of these? Um, this came in handy. Not too as not not as much as I'd like. This is definitely a sideboardable card. Um, good against Goku Striving to give you the best. It doesn't really affect this deck at all. Actually, it's good against like um, getting rid of those uh, swap chains. And it's good against um, the Goku decks because it ignores barrier and just KOs something. So you can just pop their Aiders, it pops their Gokus. They don't have Aider on board, stuff like that. Pretty nice. It pops their uh, turn two big fatties. Pretty nice. Double double impact Krillin. We're running two copies of Chain Attack, or I'm sorry, a Chain Attack. Wow. Further destructioning Champa, Chain Attack Champa. Um, this was mostly and Anadonic Warrior's best friend. Critical. Makes her 25, plus you they discard a card. Like, it just allowed her to go super freaking deep and just ruin their ruin their lives. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they, they, I, I would get them down to five lives if they didn't have self-awakening. Like, I played over the weekend. Like, I entered two team events on Saturday and then the Gunslinger on Sunday. And overall, I probably faced a good seven, and nine, seven or nine uh, Janemba decks. I was literally able to just let them sit there and twiddle their thumbs while I discarded their hand around them. They were trying to lay mill a couple cards, but they were like feeding some of the, like the Lord Slug combos, all that kind of stuff. This just put in so much work and just like because Janemba decks aren't ever plussing, they're just constantly breaking even, so as soon as you drop them, like as soon as you gain hand advantage, you've pretty much got the match. I like there was like what maybe one Janemba match the entire weekend where I was at any risk of losing. Like, it was insane. Like, probably my perfect matchup. And, like, in the Gunslinger event, out of six rounds, I faced three Janembas. I just literally kept getting fed them. I'm running two Shocking Death Balls. Um, sparking. Because I am running, I'm only running two of these because I am running a handful of uh, Overrealms, so sometimes I just can't get the Sparking off. But it's nice. It blows up turn, a low turns. It's good against, like, those uh, pesky swap matchups, those Goku matchups. Just allows me to blow the th blow the stuff up, and pretty nice. Um, I decided to more focus on the side of uh, sacrifice. Um, it has built in built in sparking without sparking, so I can use my life to power this if my leader's the Mechian, which Lord Slug is, which is pretty nice. One shot negate, and I can rip a life if if I tap out. Pretty awesome because I usually tap out turn three, and then I can protect my life with sacrifice. Pretty nice. Um, two copies of Preemptive Strike. This came in clutch. So this was probably the clutchest card in the, the only three matches I I, I, I lost four matches all weekend. Um, most of them were two mirrors or green, like it was other green decks, but uh, these were super clutch in those matches. And like if I, if I maybe would have played them a bit more conservatively or new or I don't know, I don't know. These, these I definitely think could have been more more useful in the matchups I did lose. I don't know if I just didn't see them or I just didn't know I should have be using them at the times I did. But like green decks, if you preemptive strike them, a lot of times they just kind of crumble a little bit. They just have to reset up and it just takes them so much longer to set up. Um, next is next is super combo. I mean this this helped out of, as almost as much as wings. We got uh, defending father Paragus. It's it's a hoy. It's a freaking hoy. And this deck runs so many like weird cards that are semi-situational, but also really good. Um, that like you're not going to use them in every matchup. And so defending Father Paragus and uh, Lord Slug's ability just kind of lets you use those cards that you wouldn't normally like use. Like I said, this was a best of one format, so there's a lot of weird teching and stuff involved. And like between Paragus and uh, Slug's abilities, I would just discard whatever wasn't good for that matchup and. It'd be hunky dory. I, did, I, I literally had like no dead cards in this in this matchup. It was, it was well, that's basically what it meant. So like, say I was facing uh, red blue deck, Haru Haru would be dead. 
I would pitch it with those kind of things. If I was facing a yellow-green matchup, Tien would be dead. I'd pitch it with one of those two things. Pretty awesome. But I was running one Tien uh, against the Genema matchups. Didn't need it. It was actually just me plossing, like, even farther in the greens with them. Uh, but super nice. Also good against the Gogeta matchup. Gogeta BR. Haru Haru. Meet kind of mirror matchup. Green matchups. All that kind of stuff. Yellow Broly. Um, pretty freaking nice. The thing you got to watch out with this, though, is, like, yeah, you sideboarded against Yellow Green. You get critical, all that kind of stuff. But um, Yellow Green also has the biggest fears. So, like, Cold Bloodlust and Preemptive Strike, if you think you're you're about to just go absolutely, you're like, I have three of these in hand, I'm about to go stupid wide on my opponent, punch him in the punch him in the face, they Preemptive Strike your first one, or they Cold Bloodlust your first one, you just waste three mana for nothing. You could have went Slug Chains and dip for days, but you were like, I'm going to go wide, I'm, and you got punished for it. So this is a card you think you're punishing your opponent for, this can come back to bite you in the butt. Um, more one ofs. We ran one evil uh, psych Zamasu. Pretty good. Or it's, it's it's a blocker that has indestructible barrier blocker. Just app, just crazy. It's dumb. It's like for those matchups where you just need that blocker where you know it needs to stay on board. Dimensional Mana Shifu. Good for removing uh, big threats from the board, um, controlling the board a little bit, and uh, just. Uh, double strike. There's just a free do or uh, one cost double strike that you bring out when you've already controlled the board and you're just like, I'm ready for to go for game. Drop this. Boom. And then last but not least, Mass Saiyan. Uh, we were all kind of uh, worried about this Goku deck, so Mass Saiyan kind of handles the Goku deck a little bit, pretty much on his own. Also, it got rid of like random handfuls of things when you're uh, when you're facing your opponents. And again, it was a nice double strike over on card that again just pushed for game. So. This was the uh, slug deck, and if you have any questions about it, I like I said, I'm, I plan on playing this deck for a while. Actually, it was it was it had super good matchups, and like I really want to learn to play this deck a little better than I did, and I think I did pretty well with it. Um, but if you have any questions, we did uh, like I said, we went to the Chicago event over the week. We did a bunch of deck profiles. Like I said, if you're your deck's first deck profile, we did a bunch. Maybe something that you might be interested. So head down there, hit that subscribe button, then go check out the playlist, which is this will be in, and check out all the deck profiles for the current set, and next week we'll be back to our usual kind of layout of the formats. We'll have some Dragon Ball Dokkan Battle videos, we'll have more deck profiles, we'll have pack openings of the brand new Speed Dueling set. I mean, I'm hyped for it. And all that kind of stuff. So if anything, anything that tickles your fancy, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Poker us out. Peace.